I am really impatient and I have finished reading all of Kathy Glass's books. I finished reading them a while ago and I'm now in the position where I have to wait impatiently every six months for the new one. So I decided to go back to the beginning because when I first started reading her foster care memoirs, I read them a bit um, haphazardly. I didn't really start with any in particular. Um, I initially got them out of the library before I started buying them on Kindle. So I just read what I could. And I thought, let's go back and read them chronologically. And it's definitely a very interesting experience to go back to the beginning. Partly because Kathy Glass, as a foster carer, she has children of her own. It's very interesting to actually go back and see these uh, as young children and in fact in this first book in cut she only has her son adrian her daughter paula didn't exist at this point um which is certainly very peculiar but also the changes in in social care and the way that social workers operate i'll talk a little bit about that but i don't want to give away too much information because that's part of what shocked me and compelled me with going back to read this one so if you're in the same position as me and you've read a lot of her books you've read them all do go back and read this one, especially if it's been a while since you read it, because it is quite shocking to see how, I'll say how bad things were back then. Um, we're talking, I'm not entirely sure when this was set, I'm thinking early 90s, maybe, just based on how old her children are in the latest book and then how old they were here, Adrian being a, a, a young baby of about 10 months old, I think. Um, so... It's definitely very different, but the book itself was released in 2009 and it tells the story of a girl called Dawn and Dawn is 13 years old and she's passed between her parents back and forth, always living with one then the other, never really having a stable home and she goes to stay with Kathy and while she's there, Kathy realises that Dawn is quite a troubled individual and she begins to display worrying um, behavior she begins to sleepwalk but it's what she does while she's sleepwalking that's quite troubling and, and quite frankly disturbing and i'm not going to say too much about that but kathy does some digging tries to find out more and over time we learn more about dawn and begin to piece things together now i couldn't remember exactly what had happened to dawn in fact i thought i did remember but it turns out i was conflating it with another book um, possibly one by pa Kathy Glass, possibly by another foster carer. So it was actually a surprise to me what it what had caused these behaviours. And I don't think it was predictable. I think it was definitely something that kept me hooked until the end and beyond the end. You know, I still have questions that I'd love to get answers to. Um, the answers just don't exist, unfortunately. But it was one of those books that I read... And even with the second time reading it, I was just compelled all the way through. Dawn is generally a likeable character. Um, there are some times when I wanted to grab her by the shoulders and shake her, which <laughs> suggests I should never foster care. But, you know, there are times when you think you're, you have troubles, you, you have a troubled past or, you know, you, something in your mind is causing you to worry and to feel anxious or restless but you still need to be responsible for your actions. And sometimes Dawn kind of neglected that fact. But it was all very interesting. I will say it's very triggering. I won't say with what exactly, but the title might give it away. I, I did personally find that really difficult to deal with. Um, of course, based on the title and you going into it, that's kind of the thing I'd be getting into. But it it's triggering, but it's also educational and eye-opening. And I think that that's the most important thing here. As I said, it does look at, well, it doesn't look at the differences in, in fostering, but it certainly highlights the differences between now and then. And there's a character in this called Ruth who I wanted to slap because she just seemed clueless and completely disinterested, which is not the way to do things. And it is quite shocking to think about how little involvement social workers actually had with the children they were meant to be caring for and it's any wonder that Kathy Glass continued to foster to be perfectly honest if I'd had those experiences early on with such little support from social workers I don't know if I'd have been able to continue she is genuinely a hero um really thoroughly enjoyed it of course very fascinating to go back to the beginning I am currently actually halfway through the second book um 
And even now I can begin to see changes in, in, in the way social workers operate. Really thoroughly enjoy it. Um, to be honest, normally I'd say if you haven't read any Kathy Glass books, go to the beginning. But having read this now, I'd say maybe don't. Um, start somewhere in the middle. Um, I know that's weird advice. And I, I don't know if Kathy Glass would give you that advice. On her website, it actually does say, you know, if you want to read them in order, do that. But I don't think it's the best example of the kind of experience you can have from her books. Because most of her books, after, say, the first one or two, she's a very experienced foster carer. And it's a much different experience, reading experience. Whereas here it's all about how she, she started out, how she found her feet. And I thought it was rather fascinating, really thoroughly enjoyed it. I will probably read it again in the future. If you're a fan of Kathy Glass and you haven't read Cut or you haven't read it in a while, I thoroughly recommend that you give it another go.